episode is brought by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Red Raptor Writes. Today, I have a much requested series review. This isn't really a dinosaur documentary as much as it is just a short film. Uh, I've gotten a lot of comments about the dead sound uh, dinosauria short film series. Um, these came out a few years ago. I think um, this is the first one, Old Buck, came out in 2021. I have watched these before when they were coming out, but I don't remember too much about them. It's It's been a while since 2021, though I have tried to do some research to better understand the making of this and the paleontology behind this. Dead Sound actually released... Um, videos on the creation of these movies, which I really appreciate. It made the research a lot easier. And when it comes to reviewing, like, it feels like the wrong term to use here because that makes me feel like I'm above dead sound, analyzing his work, judging it, when that's not really the case. This is a great series, and I want to do an appreciation of this series but that doesn't sound as catchy of a title as a review. So this isn't me looming over, judging. This is, let's get together, let's look at what this dude made and how cool it is, because uh, this is very accurate. Although it's not a documentary, it's better than most documentaries we've seen before. All right, so again, we're starting with Old Buck. This one uh, features uh, Styracosaurus Old Buck, and whenever I make Styracosauruses in a game, uh, Old Buck is always the the name asked for. All right, so let's start this, but uh, I should warn you that I will be pausing this often and commenting. It's not to be annoying, it's uh, just so I don't get a copyright strike. And also, be sure to watch this on your own, because again, I'll be pausing, commenting, skipping some parts, just to not get that copyright strike. Um, show Dead Sound some love, show him some appreciation, and some of that YouTube ad revenue, <laughs> and let's get started. Okay, pause number one, we're a few seconds in, and there's already um, a lot to talk about. So, I, I like the visual storytelling of this, of this short film. Uh, you see the scars on this Styracosaurus showing that this is a, well, he's old buck. This is an old male that's seen a lot. He went to Vietnam, the tree spoke to him, he's been through so much. Um, whether it's other duels, or predation attempts, Stuff like that, just tripping and falling. We see how time has not been kind to this guy. Good visual storytelling, I appreciate it. Oof, that's such a nice color palette too. I, I like the monochromatic grays, the whites, the blacks. And then on top of that comes the, uh... oh, what? Okay. So he's having a Vietnam flashback, I see. <laughs> kind of reminds me of like Ghost of Tsushima with all the flowers blowing in the breeze. Okay, so um, something to point out is how the different Styracosauruses have different horn... Um, what would I call it? <laughs> different ornamentation. Um, it looks different on all of them. There's so much variation. Actually, are those webs on this one? Or are those vines? Stuff is getting stuck in those horns. Okay, so... I, I do... Okay, I'm gonna pause this a lot. But I like how... Oh, uh, wait. We saw the, the blood on this one here. I like the color scheme with the red. It's really striking. It's really highlighted. It reminds me a lot of Jaws. And how uh, in Jaws, there's like barely any red in the movie or it's like really toned down um so that when you see the blood it's just so much more striking and that's what's happening here though i could do with the water not being red maybe because <laughs> that kind of takes away and um 
this ornamentation here on old buck. I'll show it, I'll show it again. Yeah, look at him. He's uh has a much different uh, features than the other much different orientation, that's what I'm looking for. Orientation than the other Cyracosauruses. So uh, if I'm correct, this one, old buck, is based off of Alright, it's difficult. Uh, this is difficult. Uh, there was a Ceratopsid genus named Rubiosaurus, which looked like this. So it's like, oh, it looks different than Cyracosaurus. Let's give it a new name. But then we find so much variation within Styracosaurus that's like, okay, I guess Rubiosaurus, or this specimen, just falls into what we would think of as variation within Styracosaurus. There is still debate on whether uh, this is Styracosaurus ovatus, where it gets a new species, different than Albertensis, or whether Rubiosaurus ovatus is really just still Styracosaurus albertensis. Um, I guess Dead Sound here is arguing, maybe it's not an intentional argument, but more of a, just a fun design choice, uh, arguing that um, Rubiosaurus ovatus is not just S. ovatus, but S. albertensis. Because, well, this, this one is trying to mate and dominate the other albertensises. <laughs> and uh, this younger male in particular that he's challenging, ooh, Lambiosaurus. <laughs> yeah, very nice, pretty Lambiosauruses. I do like that that patterning. It's it's very very cool and and lifelike. Like I can imagine this. This seems valid. Um, has that little little beak. I love those Lambiosaurine crests. And you see, uh. This is supposed to be sexual dimorphism here. So we have a mating pair. The male with the larger crest. And it looks like his beak is... His snout is longer too. And then the female with the shorter crest here. It's kind of reminiscent of birds and how males are more ornamental and colorful. Oh yeah, I see that... That striking red. I'll try to pause and get the young male here. Okay, um, I first thought this was supposed to be Gorgosaurus, but no, this is a Daspletosaurus here. Um, and I do like the addition of the scars on the face here too, because this is supposed to be indicative of how Tyrannosaurids bite each other's faces. We have multiple specimens of tyrannosaurids with bite marks on their snouts. This is how they interacted with each other, whether it was for dominance or competition, fighting over food, something like that. They would bite each other's faces. And we have this with Daspletosaurus, so it's a great touch here. Beautiful. And yeah, he did not pronate the wrists. The wrists are not pronated. Even with the Styracosauruses, the wrists are correct, which is nice. But this young male, this young male is based off of a specimen that um, you can kind of see here how the two sides don't match. Uh, there was a uh, pathology, an injury on, just would be the left side of the face, of the frill. And that causes all of the spikes to shift and not grow normally. So the two halves actually look different. So even uh, Styracosaurus individuals have a lot of variation, but even the individuals themselves have variation in how in, in their different side in the different sides and how they grow. Which is a really nice detail. I love how Dead Sound just went through all this effort to make the Styracosauruses look different. Now, now the other ones look like typical uh, Albertensis, or what we assume is a typical, because what's typical for them? Um, we're not quite sure, but more like the holotype. So you see how uh, 
the horns shift in position and they grow differently um, on the left than the right. So there's an extra long horn on the left side. Getting very uh, Mustafar vibes while the, the lava. <laughs> it's supposed to be water, but it looks like lava. Bro got yeeted across. It's it's interesting. All right, so we have the more forward pointing horn, which uh, may may be more accurate. It's how they're depicted now. It was assumed for many decades that it would look like a rhino horn would point up and backwards, but maybe it, it actually went forward. <laughs> yeah, even the Nasplitosaurus is shocked, like, dang, that's brutal. I don't know if it would have gone all out and just murdered the other one. <laughs> So yeah, we have typical intraspecific combat between two males fighting over a harem of females. We're not quite sure that Styracosaurus did this, but it's it's a good I don't want to say guess, because guess makes it sound like we're just guessing, you know, we don't know. It's a good inference. Maybe I can leave it at that. They have all this display, these large features, a giant horn, and they were used for something. Oh, and this is another detail that uh, Dead Sound added. Having three Despletosauruses. Um, it was, it's vague whether they're meant to be a family group, a pack, just individuals coming together to look at the carnage <laughs> and a feast on the bodies that are left over. But there is actually a bone bed in the two medicine formation in Montana with three differently aged Despletosaurus found together uh, with hadrosaur carcasses that they were feasting on. So it may be possible that they actually lived together or maybe they did just come together for food and then went their separate ways. It's, it's unclear. But also, uh, Albertosaurus, a close relative of Despletosaurus, has huge bone bed, the dry island bone bed with, wow, how many individuals? Over a dozen, in the, over like two dozen individuals, I think. A lot of Albertosauruses in one spot. It's unclear what caused <laughs> all of them to come together. Did they live, but so many live together? Or did they just all come to the same spot to die? I'm not sure. Not sure how that happened. But yeah, he gets a free meal. <laughs> when do we get the free food? Ghost of Tsushima. You need the divine winds. Oh man, this is brutal. Yeah, oh, that striking rat. I love the color scheme. Love the color scheme. It's interesting, the uh, the good dinosaur does the same thing with uh, webs and vines in the horns. Okay, I didn't know the, the creator's name, but uh, David James Armsby, thank you for your work. This is awesome. I really appreciate it. You did such a great job at portraying dinosaurs. Just a very fun, simple, straightforward animation that shows what life may have been like for some dinosaurs back in the late Cretaceous. And it, that's it. It's over. Okay. It's over. <laughs> that's the shot we can end it on. So I, I love these short films. Um, so much time and effort, work must have gone into producing and preparing. And, um, just making this all happen, animating all of this. I I can't even imagine what went into this kind of thing. Um, but it came out really great. Like, very accurate, like top-of-the-line accuracy. 
I'm not sure where the whole Styracosaurus or Beosaurus controversy will end, whether it will be S. ovatus or S. albertensis still. Um, but either way, this is still amazing for its time. Um, the animals look totally realistic. I, I love the, the patterning on them, the morphology, um, the... Um, the ornamentation on the Styracosaurus, how I put so much effort just into making them look different because we know how different and weird this creature was. Um, and that's why they were ranked as my favorite herbivore in my dinosaur ranking. My favorite herbivore. They're just so bizarre, but so cool at the same time. Do I give this a grade? I mean, this would be an easy A, right? This is an easy A if I were to grade it. Uh, but no, I'm not going to put it on the ranking because this isn't technically a documentary. It's just a short film. But those are my thoughts on the old buck dinosauria short film. Please remember to go watch this for yourself so you can get the full experience, full enjoyment out of it. Watch Dead Sound's other videos because they're also, just as amazing as this one, I will go back to cover them. And remember, if you enjoyed this episode, to please leave a like, subscribe, and to check out my social media. See you next time.